What I have here is probably the most common form of wooden hand plane. This one happens to be a long joiner, but they all get adjusted the same way. First thing you need to do when you're adjusting a wooden hand plane, especially if it hasn't been used for some time, is to release the wedge. To do this, I tip the plane on its side and I usually grab the whole iron and wedge assembly and then I use a hammer to drive the body of the plane forward. The reason I use a light hammer to adjust these planes is because it makes it easy to make fine adjustments. If four taps moves the blade too far, then next time try three or two. If light hammering doesn't release the wedge, then you need to get a little bit more aggressive. A good method is to put a block of wood on the floor and then hammer the plane against that. This usually happens if the plane's been sitting around for a while and there's been a change in humidity. Then you reassemble the plane, make sure the blade is well seated, and then you insert the wedge. While you're adjusting the plane, the wedge is only tapped in very lightly. You just need enough pressure to keep the blade in place. And then once again, I flip the plane on its side and I use a small piece of wood to test the cut. As you can see here, it's biting just a little bit too much. To raise the plane iron, I'll reach around the wedge and just hang on to the actual iron and then I'll drive the body of the plane forward. Hanging on to the plane iron just gives the blade a little bit more inertia and really reduces the amount of hammering you need to do on the plane body to adjust the plane. And any time I raise the blade I always double check the wedge to make sure that it's seated properly. Now the cut's a little light so I'm going to need to lower the blade slightly. To do that I'm going to rest my hand on the top of the plane iron while I drive the nose of the plane backwards. And then once again, I test the cut with a scrap piece of wood. You can see that by using a scrap piece of wood to test the cut, I'm able to leave the plane laying on the bench, and that eliminates a lot of the maneuvering that's normally needed when you're adjusting a wooden hand plane. And you'll repeat this process until you get the cut that you want, and then you're ready to drive the wedge home and use the plane. Just remember to release the wedge if you're going to be storing the plane for any amount of time. Another common form of plane that I consider to be a wedged hand plane because there's no mechanical way of adjusting the blade is this inexpensive block plane. That large threaded nut inside the cap iron is what presses against the blade to hold it in place. A lot of these planes have a raised portion in the casting. This is actually the striking knob that you use to raise the blade. And once again, for this type of plane, I'll just be putting enough pressure on the blade to hold it in place. Once I get the cut that I want, I'll be tightening it down. So you tap the striking knob to raise the blade, and to lower the blade, you just hammer the back of the blade to drive it forward. This is a common form of spoke shape. Once again, there's no mechanical adjustment here. It's a simple plain blade and cap iron assembly that's all held together with one screw. Once again, I'm starting with very little pressure on the cap iron, and I usually rest my two fingers on the back of the blade just to give it a little bit more inertia. To adjust the spoke shape, I usually use a brass hammer or the handle of a screwdriver. Driving the handles forward lowers the blade, and driving the handles backwards raises the blade. And as always, you tighten everything down when you're done. This is a common form of rabbit plane or molding plane you're all familiar with. It gets adjusted exactly the same way as all the other planes that we've seen so far. The only thing you have to be careful of when you're adjusting this plane is that you're always striking the solid upper part of the plane body, not the weaker lower half. To release the iron, rest your hand in the cutout of the wedge and then tap the back of the plane lightly.
And again with this plane we're putting very little pressure on the wedge while we're adjusting the cut. One of the planes that intimidated me the most when I was starting out turns out to be the easiest to adjust. I knew I couldn't hit this delicate plane with a hammer to release the iron so I really didn't know what to do. And then one day I was wondering why these planes were the only ones that were made with such thick wedge shaped irons and then it occurred to me. This plane is beautifully designed to be fully adjustable without touching the plane body at all. You can release the blade by simply driving it forward and you can raise the blade by striking the hook that's built into the top of the blade. All the planes in my collection are common working planes that I've had to rebuild or assemble from various parts. I don't recommend striking any collector's item or any museum piece. 